first they just start with the dollar. But first I gotta spark my cigarette, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, so this is I love this stuff I C D is covered anyway, so I'm probably like regurgitating a lot of it. Doesn't really make sense, but okay, let's fucking do it anyway. So obviously it's going to this H one blocker. The way it's looking is more than likely looking like it's gonna take this out. So where's liquidity at where the stops resting at? Let's just mark the clear points, reference points. So we've got that. Yeah. Everyone can hear me, yeah? So we've got that. And then obviously we've got this level here as well. So I'm just gonna uh which is only one colour so when I mark out stops for one colour this one as well so that's pretty obvious nothing complicated there um, it is pr quite heavy we've got no sign that it really wants to you know go up so for now my bias is going to be is trying to reach for this so what does that mean it means bullish foreign cur currencies obviously so I'm just going to go through the majors can't be f going through the exotics are barely traded nowadays anyway so you five bank cable are going to be the main ones so that, everyone's clear with that yeah i mean we're, we're looking at that so going into next week <coughs> uh <coughs> so obviously we've got short-term stops here right and obviously I, I, I don't know where to show where i'm going to short it from here you know it's not clear to me but it looks to me we've come off of previous week we've come off of this little block thing here right so I mean, if I just draw a line, it's probably a bit clearer. Right, so all this thing. So this block has held, has broken down, and then during Friday, this is one of the reasons why I shorted the cable. Long, we went long cable, sorry. Well, cable, cable, and fiber were enough. Of it. Looking at the dollar index, if you look at the video, I know it shows you a bit quick. But actually, I'd mark this mark down in the video, but because the speed was so quick, you probably missed it unless you freeze it. So looking at this, I'm looking for. Sh um, lower dollar which basically means higher fiber and cable okay so I'll see how price unfolds but my my bias is gonna be a lower dollar and long cable so as long as I know that, okay I know this is trying to reach for this if this gives in it's gonna try to reach for this and then who knows what's gonna happen after that so just keep it short term for now and that's how I've been trading that's, that's clear so far is it is nothing complicated okay so um, I'll go with cable now. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna explain why I took the cable, right? And then um, I'll go into detail later as to what I'm looking for. So obviously we've got this here, this daily block here, right? If you look carefully, I mean this one here is holding as well. If you draw the body like this, right to the pip there, if you go across. But ignore that for now. So we've come down and come to the block. We've taken like, these stops here. I see as I talked about these tops here into a daily block and where there's previous buy you can accept expect some sort of bounce there. We've got that bounce. Now you know it could be intraday. It does it can be short term as long as it can make money off it. Who gives a fuck? So um now in price so price has come down. If you go into the thirty minute chart right, I was looking at this here. Fifteen minute block there as well and a thirty minute. So there's gonna be a bit of overlapping with the colours. So I just want the top part to the body out, right? And I see I posted this chart anyway. So we've got these clean lows here. Typical London open rush uh, rally down. And if you saw me, I posted I posted a picture um, of, of my chart on my phone. And I said, okay, it's come to that. I think it was a H1. And I, uh, was it H1 or 15 or 30 minutes? It was one of the time frames. And I was looking for this possible long here. And I had marked at this high here. So I'm going to smoke at these stops here. Uh, it's basically a stop rate play. It was nothing more than a stop stop run, and this is why I played it twice. So London Open gave the better one, I reckon. It's quick. London Open was quick. It did not waste time whatsoever. Um, we're looking at this here, right? Really clean. I think this is gonna get taken next week. I'll explain why as well after this. So it's come down. Now obviously I don't know if it's gonna hold or not. You know, sometimes I'm just not confident in buying it here. So what I did was I waited for this block to form. So I know these stops are taken. Now, once these stops are taken, I, I'm thinking to myself, okay, Im, Im, ignore the fact that this big candle has happened. So we're looking at basically price up until this green part here, okay? So it's come down, it's taken the stops and rejected back up. So you know that's a fucking stop play. And looking at the price action, when it dropped off fast, that was that's nice. That that's what you want to look for, okay? So 50 back to 15 minute. So I had that, and then I was looking for okay. 
and then I drew this out well I was looking at this anyway so this 15 minute block there now let's get rid of this now if you can imagine when this candle is forming it's like a bearish candle isn't it so if I'm correct right this low should hold now so what I did was as soon as the price came into this in the morning I had my stop loss there and entered it so it's about 20 20 to 25 pips depending on which card I took it on but um yeah and what was my target well it's the obvious target was here and is there an order block above there? I still been through this anyway. I'm just repeating it here. Um, so I actually held this right, and I did. I thought maybe we're gonna go higher because initially I was aiming for these highs here. And if you look on the daily, I thought I I, I think price is gonna come up to here at least. You know whatever happens later on, later on, that's later on. But I think it's gonna come up to that daily block there. So if you look at the dailies only, it makes it makes it, it's a lot it's a lot clearer. You know, instead of looking at flipping 50 blocks on the five minute chart and then you're changing your bias every two minutes but if you just stick the daily okay it's come down to daily block jump up it come down it's taken the stops out and it just wants to go higher so i i was watching price it rallied up and what i didn't like was the fact that look how thin this was really fast and thin so when i saw it hit that block and start reacting off it I go, okay i don't know if i want to hold this and it came down came up again and as it was coming down, I just cut it. So I closed that. <coughs> now, you know that price is going to come down. I wasn't confident to short it here. Uh, so I left it. I thought, I'm going to still look for longs. Why am I looking for longs now? This just shows me, right, I, I'm, I think there's still liquidity left to be taken to the upside. And also, if you look at it, if you miss this, then this could say, okay, a stop rate. And then a rally up, show the buyers have come in. Okay? And then back down and a retest to buy it up again and the big move to continue now I was aiming for higher prices and I did not get that um, and then I ended up closing it, I ended up closing it here around here, it's in the video anyway and the video just shows up to there and then this was a pair of the longs but um, that's that now why why did I take the long here I'm not sure because I, I had a few questions on why did you draw equilibrium basically my equilibrium was just this so take this Jimmy candle I drew. Uh, I'm getting confused now why I drew the equilibrium. Which time frame was it? Is it the five minute? See, this feeds a bit different, you see, compared to FXCM. Or uh, I use. I, see, the feeds a bit different, you see, because you can't see clear equilibrium. But this block came into something sort of equilibrium. The, the blue line I drew was the M15, because one of. Cause sometimes, you know, the candles are a bit different sometimes, yeah. It's a bit weird. Okay, in this one it goes down a bit deeper. But if you look at the other feeds, right, it doesn't go down as deep. Um, but anyways, I had it drawn here, and I thought, okay, um, I had it drawn here, and if it starts rejecting back up of this, then I'm gonna get in. And what happened was, as it was moving up, I bought it. As it was moving up, so I wasn't chasing it. Um, I was, I was anticipating this to hold. And it was behaving how it would. And I thought, okay, if it's gonna come down to equilibrium, it shouldn't really be breaching this, really. I think it only breaches about one tick on this feed. It's by a couple, but you know you're gonna get that data discrepancy, you know, changes between brokers. So yeah. So as I was moving on, we see me buy it, and then that was the end of that. So that's clear, right? Why I took the long. And like I said, this stop should hold because you know it's taken that out. And if you did take this, then I would have been wrong, and it's going somewhere else. Now at the same time, I was watching the dollar index. And price was around here, was hovering around this H1 block. It was taken on the high of the day there. It's come down, and I mean, expecting it to come to this block, right? So lower dollar and, and higher foreign currency. So it's holding this, holding this nicely. And yeah, that just fell in sync. Now, going forward with the cable, I think we're gonna go higher, at least into this block here. So just from current price action, current market price, that's about 70 ticks there possibly into this and maybe higher but I just going for the minimum day trade and as a day trade 60 70 ticks is um, more than enough okay so I'm happy with that that's what I'm looking for I'm only looking to day trade I'm not looking for swing trades because I don't think it's a swing trade environment but or I can't trade a swing trade myself in this environment anyway so is everyone clear with the cable I'm looking for so if it comes there I'll see what happens when it comes there um, obviously we do have you know this part of the block so if this starts to break given uh, come down lower then obviously we're gonna take out this and new lows and then you're gonna go to the monthly chart and then we've got this here that's monthly anything can happen within the monthly you know but yeah that's what I'm looking for 
Um, now entry wise, I'm, I'm not really clear. I mean, if you look at this right, it's a bit of like a grind. This is, so I'll have to wait for clearer price action to unfold. But look how clean this is. I think we're gonna take this out at least anyway, and it comes into this breaker here, which is the base of the um, daily block anyway. So there's a lot, a lot of confluence here. So I'm, I'd be surprised if this doesn't get taken. We're really surprised. But what I'll be looking for is longs on the cable. Okay, that's that. Fiber, fiber was a similar setup. I just had cable uh, at the time, so fiber comes down in the morning, drops. No, oh fuck's sake, keep getting these alerts. Okay, so it comes down. Um, runs down, similar as cable. Takes out the stops, rallies up, shows buyers have come in, and it dip back down. Yeah, fucking buyer. It's just that I'm, I, I took cable, and I wasn't interested in the in fiber. So it's come down. I bet you a lot of people got shit scared of this as well. But the reason why I was I was uncomfortable buying it at this 15 minute block, although if you did take it here and you had it stopped there, you would have been safe anyway. Okay. <coughs> when, when I see inefficiency here, I mean, I probably if, if I was choosing care fiber, I would have probably taken it anyway here, and I probably would have got a bit worried coming down. But you gotta look at it right. Love inefficiency. This thin movement gap hasn't been filled yet. And what they do, they fill the gap in fast. And they move up now, you know. When you're taking this, you, you have in mind that uh, the way I think about it is that because this low here took out the stops, this should hold now. There's no reason for them to take it out again. It can happen, but it's how I play with tight stops. So you can either buy at the close of this candle or wait for some sort of bullish candle or for the candle to start moving up. So whether it's in the middle of moving up or the close of this candle. So if you got at the close of this candle, that's still you know good season. That's a tentative stop. I just spread wherever. Now, where would you be targeting? I usually go for the H1 blocks, right? You can see liquidity there, liquidity there, liquidity there. And I'll just mark out, you know, the base of the H1 block, the bare minimum. Um, and you can see where the stops are clearly, you know, above all these highs here. So you know where the market's going to try to go for. There, there. And basically, yeah. So nice move up. Fast moving up. If you miss that, then you got another entry down here, you know. And you know what Mark is trying to target, and that's that. I, the thing I like about this, they get these clean highs here. As beautiful that is. I'd like to get on board this long. I still got, I still think it's got upside potential. And similar with the dollar index, um, this high there. And if that gives in, then possibly that high there. Okay, so I'm not going to have big projections, but I'll do the intraday trades. I'll see how price unfolds. Um, and so we've got this H4 block here, right? So let's clear this up a bit. So going forward, I mean, um, okay, that was that price action. Going forward, I mean, we can see clearly this H4 block's holding. And we've seen the buyers come in. And, you know, then we've got, now we've got this block formed here. Okay. So any dip into there, I'm, lo I'm, I'm looking for a pattern. Uh, what we do, we bring in time of day. <coughs> London Open. New York Open is the only times you want to be taking the Euro really and uh, we'll see what happens there. Obviously you can dip into here but this H1 block falls into the H4 block anyway. So we'll see what price does when it happens but we know I, I'll be that's that's what I'll be targeting anyway for price to come down and then you know give me something and then just play it up. That's what I'll be targeting and that's it really. Is that is that the Euro clear? My main my main focus can be five and cable anyway. I mean, I found you yeah, that you know when you focus on fewer pairs and stick to the majors, you know it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier, man. You know, a lot of people. And you, I know I, sometimes I show a lot of um, pairs here, but I only have that because someone asks me, "What do you think of this?" Or if I'm trying to compare um, price action between two majors, I love a um, exotic up or a cross up. But trust me, man. I, I used to trade them a lot. You know, pound as he, euro as he. It's a fucking headache, man. Trust me. I don't like trading them anyway. Um, so I mean this is still bullish so lo looking at um, euro GBP so I'm gonna have I, I've got this daily block marked out here so I'm gonna mark out the baby at the, the top of it I can see a case for both pound and euro going up <coughs> now you gotta go to intra uh, lower time from and see okay which one's gonna at this stage I mean okay it's in, it's in this consolidation right now um, if you draw this out here is it held? Yep, it's held that. So, yeah, I mean, 
there's no bearish sign here just yet. I mean, the way it's been holding, it's it's just consolidating really. So that's why I mean, if you look if you look at Friday's price action, look look at the range from okay low New York session low on the K euro and the high was about 67 ticks. And if you look at um cable, the new the same setup. The high was about 83 ticks. So cable gave probably better more pips. But yeah, I pre I personally prefer um cable, but um. You know, I'm happy to, whichever one sets up for me, I'll fucking take it. Um, I, I, li I like this area for a buy here. So if the price comes down here, and what I would like to see is this hold. If this holds, it's going to be a no-brainer. I'll see what price action does when it comes. There'll probably be a buyer here. Um, and it depends if he wants to take this out. I don't, I, I don't think it, it, it could take this out. But regardless, I'll see what price action does where, where it's at London Open. And then you bring in, for extra precision, you bring in what ICT is taught now. Now, a lot of people, right? They're forgetting what ICT is already taught and they're moving straight into what he's taught in MM12, just applying that only. And they're fucking forgetting what he's already taught. Those are the core things. These new things he's applying are just more refining. But people seem to forget that and they just jump onto a new, new, new thing. And they still struggle and they will always be like that. So don't forget what he's taught already. Those are the core foundation. This is just building on it. That's all it is. You can still make money even without what he's taught. You can still be making money. If you're not, then that, that's an issue. You know. So everywhere clear what I'm looking for here. Yeah, I don't know, Euro GBP is not really clear to me, you know, to be honest with you, man. Um look at it, I mean I'd say that, you know, okay, because it keeps going up, I've got no reason to be bearish just yet. Yes, it's taken out the stops and it's into this here. It's it is into a bearish block, weekly block here. Let's see, monthly, um could start reaching up into that. But um We've yet to have a decent retracement, you know. I mean, it's been one-sided. Do anyone remember? I posted a yearly and quarterly chart to Euro GBP. This is the area we were targeting. Yeah. And obviously, no one looks at year, yearly. And, but the main area, see, see, it's, it's in this block here. It's taken on the stops. Um, I mean, I've even. I honestly don't know. I'll be honest with you. I just don't know. Where it's at, anyway. I mean, every time I think it's on top out, right? It's fucking just goes on. But yeah. Yes, it's not clear to me, so I'm not gonna pretend I know. That's that. Um, Aussie dollar. Yeah, so um, this is a tricky fucker as well. I'm not really clear. I'm not even bothered about Aussie dollar to be honest with you. Um, I'm only gonna look at cable and fiber. Aussie dollar, New Zealand are only coming to play for me when I can't see fuck all on the euro and cable these days. So I'm only I'm only going through what I what I, what I find. Fuck the card as well, man. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect to you, but fucking dollar card man is in his own world. Um, dollar card. But actually, dollar card. I think. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna take this. Out, I reckon. You know. I reckon. I reckon dollar card's got lower to go. And let's look at the weekly. Uh, weekly is still low in efficiency. Um, monthly. This will be interesting. This keeps up. Uh, it's at support level, but um, I, I'll, I'll keep an eye on this here. This month, the top of the month, monthly block here. Um, so now, if you look at it, right now, 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 now let's 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 put power of three into this monthly candle, right? Okay, let's put power of three into it. This will sort of support um, the cad strength. So, so this is the monthly candle we got right now. So we've opened. So I was going to open, right? We've run up. Yeah, form form the wick. Now it push pressing back down now. So once it gets below the open again, we could ex start expecting what an expansion to the downside, right? So what does that mean? I think we get all this monthly candle filled in. So I'm just gonna draw the base of this monthly candle, or at least to here. I mean, I'm, I'm gonna look for minimum. Let's look for minimum targets, right? Minimum targets is here. That's on 140 odd ticks, which is nice. And then it's here, 280 odd ticks. And then here and then lower, but I'm not even gonna go there. I'm just looking for intraday targets and then I'll, I'll think about it uh, the next day. So we could say a mark make a cell model completion. Um, so we've, we've come off of here. So let's see if this will be interesting to see. This holds obviously, you can see this um, H1 block has held. And I think we fill all this in, reach for these lows. And then whatever happens next, we just happens next. Just take each day at a time. I found easiest to each day at a time. The current price is that's 
Yeah, easy, 100 odd ticks. Get easy, 80, 90 ticks out of that, it's fine. Clear, dollar card. So I think we go lower on the dollar card. I'm expecting lower prices. But it looks over here. So yeah, so I think we get that. I mean, we've got a bit of a block here as well. So that comes into that will come into perfect of taking these lows out because we look at this one, we quite pierced this quite deeply. But yes, we did reject, but the way price is actually still heavy, so I think we're just gonna come lower and it supports our dollar view as well of lower dollar. So we'll see what happens then. Could be completely wrong if fucking rips the dollar does, but fuck it, we'll just take each day at a time. It doesn't have to be this way. If it's gonna show something else, then we'll just go with that as well. So that's that. Is everyone clear? I'm only gonna go through these pairs. No point going through something that I'm not really interested in looking at. Just gonna share with you what I'm looking at. Come on, man. You know I'm not gonna look at. I don't look at exotics. Can't Swiss. You know what? Since the SMB, right? I've never traded a Swiss pair ever again. Uh, since one more, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause the recording, okay? Yen, yen. Okay, let's have a quick uh, look at dollar yen before. Um, fucking, I look at that, man. You know, I try. I was balls deep short around um, dollar yen. I think it was around around here somewhere, and I was actually looking to hold this. Yeah, and it's fucking. I look at that. And what does he do? Just one more whipsaw back up, and this was the actual high. And then boom, look at that one. I still think we got lower, lower to go. Um, this is falling nicely. I mean, look at this. Liquidity is gonna be resting here. So if this was a five-minute chart, right? This I'd be, I'd be looking at it. This fucker here is gonna come here. At least, you know, this fuck is aiming for these lows there. With that in mind, obviously, it's a mo weekly monthly chart. That's another 700 odd ticks. I mean, I'm not going to be flipping and getting over excited because you know, you can easily have a couple of hundred pip rally back up. But I mean, intraday, you know, with the high time frame bias, there's no reason why you can't, you know. So, next area is going to be this area here. But um, I do like this, you know, I do like this here to be taken. I think it's going to get taken. Whatever happens after that, I mean, could cut. then once you come into this territory here, if you don't get a bounce, then it's going to be all this. And then it's going to be some dirty price action happening. You know. Fucking the world's probably going to end and everything. And fuck it. But, anyways, yeah, I think in Dolly and lower. <coughs> yeah, the Carl, CJ Carlos is a master at this kind of stuff. He predicts a thousand bit moves. Yeah, I've, seen, I've seen some of his. um macro analysis solid solid so yeah i think this goes lower um yeah so i'm gonna i'm just gonna pause the recording there and then i'll take questions okay i'm just gonna pause the recording uh stop